All right, cool. We just finished the next generation of the MacBook line with the M2 chip. Thank God we can finally get rid of that touch bar. Oh, Frank. Ugh, what is it, Glenn? You remember that one time it was Valentine's Day and you didn't get your wife anything, so I let you take one of the seven boxes of chocolate out of my car? Yes, I do, Glenn. Remember specifically something you said on that day when I gave you the chocolate. What was it? What was it that you said again? What t can you tell me? What was it? Uh, okay, I believe I said I owe you one. Mmm, that's right. I remember you saying something like that as well. And uh, I just wanted you to know I want the touch bar to stick around on the M2 MacBook Pro. Oh my god, Glenn, we just got rid of it on the 14-inch and 16-inch models. We've been redesigning this whole lineup from the ground up, and people really don't like the touch bar anymore. Can we please just move? Sorry, uh, I very specifically got an I owe you one, and I'm cashing it out now. Ugh. <sighs> Okay, fine. Yay! Thank you! Picking emojis is gonna be so much easier with that 10-core GPU now. How am I gonna explain this to Craig? Ugh. Let's begin! So we've been talking about software for the past couple days, and I've been very happy with iOS 16 and very frustrated with iPadOS 16, but we did actually get some new hardware, not all the hardware we were expecting at last Monday's keynote. So I wanted to dive a bit more into the M2 chip now that it's been announced, and we've also gotten some upcoming leaks on what to expect for the rest of the M2 MacBook line, and honestly, there are some surprises baked in here that I was not anticipating. So for one, yeah, the pricing of the new M2 MacBook Air is very, very similar to that of the new M2 MacBook Pro. There's one difference you should be aware of though, and that's that the new M2 MacBook Pro does not get any binned versions of the M2 chip. You get the 8-core CPU, you get the 10-core GPU, and that's it. On the entry-level price of the M2 MacBook Air, you do actually get a binned option, which is an 8-core CPU and an 8-core GPU. But if you can recall, that's the same number of GPU cores that the non-binned M1 chip had. So even the binned M2 chip, I still think will see performance gains over the regular M1. But if you opt for the non-binned M2 chip on the MacBook Air, then basically they're the same price. You're paying the exact same amount of money for the eight gigs of RAM non-binned M2 with a 256 gig SSD between these two laptops, which feels a little bit bizarre. I don't think there's ever really been a time where the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro had such a similar price lock with each other. So some of you may be curious, which one do I think you should get? Frankly, yeah, I'm leaning all the way in on the the MacBook Air. I love that new design, and while I'm not the biggest fan of MagSafe, I have to admit that this has better port selection because it means you can power the whole machine and still have two vacant Thunderbolt ports, which just kind of opens up a lot more room for improvement if you're plugging in external monitors, external drives, and that kind of thing. The biggest advantages that 13-inch MacBook Pro still has going for it is the touch bar if you like that, and better battery life. I would say that's about it. You know, in my testing, I reviewed the M1 MacBook Air, and I also reviewed the 24-inch iMac, and the iMac had no battery to worry about, and it had fans to cool down that chip, but I did not notice a big difference in performance, even with sustained workflows, compared to the M1 MacBook Air. I still think the M2 chip, regardless of if it has fans, is going to perform great, and you're not going to notice a huge performance gain, so in my view, you shouldn't really be opting for the MacBook Pro because you'll get better performance results. If you care that much about performance, you're probably not buying these types of laptops anyway. And I think the M2 over the M1 will be a much larger performance gain than M2 with a fan versus M2 with no fan. So the second advantage that MacBook Pro has going for it is battery life, which I also don't think is very strong because the battery life on the MacBook Air is still very good. I was impressed with it when I reviewed the M1 way back in 2020. Wow, that was a while ago. And while the battery life is a bit longer on the MacBook Pro, it's not going going to enable some use case that I don't think is possible. It's like pretty much with all laptops, you're going to need to take a charger with you if you're on the go. Just be prepared to charge because while Apple may say that one of these things lasts, you know, over 20 hours on a charge and the other lasts around 18 hours on a charge, the truth is MacBook battery life varies so much depending on what you're doing. And if you're in the middle of something performance intensive, I think the battery life on the MacBook Pro is really only going to be 30 minutes to an hour longer than the MacBook 
MacBook Air. And regardless, you're gonna need to pack a charger wherever you're going anyway. And I think having used the new MacBook Pro design and knowing how much more comfortable this rounded chassis is, and it's probably safe to assume this new MacBook Air, which is very thin, very light, very easy to hold, is gonna pack and be a lot more comfortable than the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which still has kind of the sharp edges on the bottom. Plus it doesn't even charge as quickly. So with the new MacBook Air, you can charge it up faster rather than waste your money on a dated design with a touch bar, which, you know, I was a big fan of, but it's clearly on the way out. I don't think Apple's keeping it around just because they know some people like the touch bar. It's likely because it's cheaper for them to keep their existing manufacturing lines open. And I think in the long run, they will eventually scrap the touch bar. It's just a matter of time. I'm surprised it got to live on on another generation, but the fact that they've gotten rid of it on the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros means, yeah, this thing is on its way out. So even though I fell in love with it, I don't recommend other people fall in love with it when it's probably gonna die soon anyway. So I'd say take the bigger display, take the more futuristic modern design, and even if the battery life isn't as good, take the fast charging, maybe just opt for a slightly better charge brick instead of upgrading the whole laptop. So my recommendation really hasn't changed. If you remember watching my old videos, I still didn't really recommend the M1 MacBook Pro to anybody except diehard touch bar fans. But Mark Gurman talked about this morning the future of the M2 lineup, which mentions some upgrades to the MacBook Pro that even I was not expecting to get this soon. He says that Apple is already hard at work on the M2 Pro in M2 Max silicon, and that we might even see that launch end of this year, perhaps early next year, which I got to admit is a lot sooner than I was anticipating. I thought, similar to previous years, that Apple would update the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips kind of every 18 to 24 months, but this is the first report we're getting about M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros, you know, 14 inch and 16 inch sizes, potentially being ready to refresh after only one year since the last one. Maybe they can get HDMI 2.1 on this generation. That would be appreciated, but he did mention not to expect many design changes overall. He still thinks this is mainly going to be a silicon boost, not a design overhaul or, you know, ditch the notch or something this early. So it does sound like a bit of a spec bump. And based on the performance gains from the M1 to the M2 chip we're seeing so far, no, I don't plan on upgrading to that one. I very much enjoy my 16 inch MacBook Pro, but the performance is not an issue for me at all. And I'm very happy with it. So even if the M2 Max chip is, you know, 15 to 20% faster, that's not gonna really justify the cost for me. But who would have known? We're supposed to expect more MacBook Pros by the end of this year. I was not expecting it in 2022. He also mentioned that next year, Apple wants to do a 15 inch MacBook Air, which I've been a huge fan of the idea from ever since people have suggested it. Not everybody needs a super powerful laptop, but a lot of people do want larger displays than 13 inches. I know these people very well because my wife is in that same camp. The whole reason she bought this 15 inch MacBook Pro back in the day was because she preferred the larger screen size, but she was not planning on doing anything very power intensive with her laptop. So I could see a very large demographic of people opting for a 15 inch MacBook Air, likely sitting somewhere in the $1,600, $1,700 price point. And maybe they can't justify getting, you know, a 16 inch MacBook Pro and also just don't want something that big and that heavy anyway. That would still likely be rocking the M2 chip. I don't think the M3 is gonna necessarily be ready by the time that comes out. But German also mentioned a new MacBook that might be coming in late 2023 slash early 2024. So we're getting really into the weeds on the future of this one. But he says Apple has plans of reviving the 12 inch regular MacBook, which of course a lot of people get excited about that because it's the thinnest, lightest laptop Apple's ever made. And ever since 2019, it's just kind of dissolved. It went away, it was gone. And there were a lot of people unhappy with the keyboard and the performance. But now with Apple Silicon and you know, the amount of performance we can get out of a fanless design now, it seems like that design would be perfect to bring back because it could be super compact, super portable, except maybe this time they could do thinner bezels around the border and maybe make a ultra super thin, powerful MacBook that still has decent battery life and mainly just addresses the keyboard concerns of the last one. But it's the first time we've actually had word on the regular MacBook series coming back. I thought they were kind of abandoning that concept, but it would be interesting to see how that laptop coexists with the MacBook Air now. Like, is there really much purpose in having that much variety of like fanless, non-performance focused MacBooks? Like we're gonna have a 15 inch Air and a 13 inch Air, but also a 12 inch non-Air? 
that maybe is rocking the M3 chip by then and the performance and battery life is pretty good. I'm not sure, but needless to say, there is still a Mac Pro as well to expect by the end of this year. And maybe part of the reason they've delayed it is kind of the overhead and scaling issues they ran into with the M1 Ultra, not quite being as fast or living up to the hype that Apple themselves pitched during their own keynote for the M1. So they might need to build that architecture on the M2. And I'm still under the belief that the Mac Pro chip won't get M terminology. It'll get some special higher end Apple Silicon branding like an X1 chip or a Pro chip or something like that. But that gives you a bit of a sneak peek of what Macs to expect over the next couple of years now that the M2 chip is out. I can't wait to try out the new MacBook Air, feel it, hold it, especially that new midnight color. I absolutely would have gotten my MacBook Pro with that if it was an option at checkout. But for now, I'll just have to live vicariously through the MacBook Air demographic next month. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you guys in the next one.